I'm Dr. Bhagavan Antel, B-H-A-G-A-V-A-N, Antel, A-N-T-L-E. People just call me Doc. That's the simplest thing. All right. Do you still have a park or what are you doing now, Doc? We operate the Myrtle Beach Safari. It is an incredible five-star attraction that people are able to come through and see the world's largest variety of tigers and other animals up close, uncaged, in an interactive way that's done like nowhere else on Earth. And Doc, I have to ask you, the t Tiger King has become huge success. Are you surprised by how big a deal it's become? Well, I never thought it could get to this level, right? This is because, I, I guess in some ways, because so many people are trapped on their couch and this train wreck of uh, adventure into uh, magical wildlife land is somehow just caught everybody's attention. Murder, mayhem, and madness certainly sums it up. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. You knew uh, Joe Exotic or no Joe Exotic. Tell, t talk to me about him. What kind of guy is he? You know, he's very much a, a guy of his culture. He is a Texas, Alabama, uh, excuse me. Joe is very much a guy of his culture. He's very much a, te a Texas, Oklahoma cowboy guy out there. You know, he's a gun carrying guy that wears his Western clothes and has permanent makeup uh, tattooed onto his face um, so that he always looks his best. Um, he's a unique guy from a, an era that's kind of gone by, I think, um, out there in Oklahoma. But uh, a personable guy, you know, a guy that you that's okay to talk to. He's um, always got something to say about Joe, but he's not an idiot. Uh, you know, on the surface, he seems like He's fairly intelligent and he's got something going on. He got lost for 15 years on the insanity of the battle between him and Carol Baskin. The two of those guys um, both just went to banana land for so long and became such adversaries in a war over lies. And both of them just became treacherous and untrustworthy and full of venom. And um, <clears throat> do you like the, the film or the documentary accurately portrayed um, things the way as a viewer I, I kept watching this is like hard to believe it's of course hard to believe because remember this is not a documentary this is a salacious outrageous ride through uh television show produced to create drama to just tie you into some crazy train wreck of a story between the feud of Carol Baskin and Joe Exotic and the meltdown that ensued between two people who both are far too close to murder themselves and I think uh, a little bit of madness thrown in on their parts. Well, when you say it's not a documentary, you're saying it wasn't accurate, it was overly... I'm saying they portrayed people in situations to create a feeling that was not done in a documentary style. Um, you know, a simple guy is John Finley, nice guy, met him several times at zoo conferences. Uh, John has a beautiful set of teeth. John has a nice haircut. John doesn't walk around without his shirt on. This is a character that they created to portray some guy that they're insinuating as meth teeth when those are dentist teeth filed into place to hold the big prosthetic because he has damage to his mouth and jaw. But he has a beautiful smile every time I've seen him. They said, take your shirt off, take your teeth out, hide in the corner and act like this. Give us more accent. Look like a redneck, crazy person. We want to portray you as a meth head. And I don't believe this gentleman's been uh, using drugs for many, many, many years. But that's the, what they're portraying him as. Seth, the little girl that lost her arm. Well, she always wears a protective sleeve on that arm. Or she just wears it inside of a coat. Every other shot but the interview. That arm is out of sight. They have her pull off the protective sleeve. They put her next to a dumpster. So she's just surrounded in trash and have her sitting there talking. These are not the style of documentary filmmakers. These are people looking for sensationalism. So I hate to give it documentary when it's really a, a wild ride edited in such a way. I worked with the director for two and a half years. Saw him probably five or six times for several days in a row each time. That endless uh, portrayal of a program that he was doing with us 
was purely about a wildlife conservation show about our work that we're doing in Sumatra and Africa to save endangered species there. It was all about how the tigers that we have here have raised so much money that we've been able to go to Sumatra and create a new ranger station there, fill it with rangers that we pay for, build the facilities that we all pay for, and get guys in the field every day to care for the endangered wildlife that's there, elephants, rhinos, orangutans, tigers, and that this is one of the last pristine places on earth where that happens. And that was the documentary that I worked on and all that uh, stuff somehow found its way to the cutting room floor where far more wild, crazy accusations were gleaned from uh, disgruntled people, jealous, crazy guys on the edges to say something outrageous and then try to go with that. Doc, so you know you were shooting Tiger King when they were filming you? No, you thought it was no something way was it ever, it was not mentioned in any capacity that this show that I was working on would portray anything about Carol or Joe. Questions about J Carol and Joe were a dozen or so thrown into hundreds of others. And I repeatedly told them, I have no desire to be involved in some show that where you've got the feud of Carol and Joe going on. It's not my thing. Leave me out of it. Over and over, that was the intention. And that's what we worked toward. But everything went sideways. And I suppose it's sideways in a great, big, explosive, entertaining way. But um, it certainly is not a documentary and full of a whole pack of untruths. Do you how did you know about how the, the the show portrayed you? Do you think it was honest and accurate? I think it was just outrageous TV. You know, they, they pushed several notions, the worst of which is that somehow tiger cubs exist in copious amounts, and that these tiger cubs have a value only as children, and that that is a super short time, and then they're just killed off afterwards. And nothing more ridiculous has ever been said. No one does that. It would be several things, illegal, immoral, impractical, and non-profitable. Who would do that to this character that is so valuable? You raise it from a child, it's spending all that time with you, and it has this great relationships where it can, on a very limited basis, go out and meet guests. Tiger Cubs at the Myrtle Beach Safari meet guests for 20 minutes, three times a week. That's it. Then those same Tiger Cubs see the next set of guests the next week. But it's an hour a week that they're involved. They make it sound like there's a torturous line of characters bothering these tigers. Tigers start working when they're three to six weeks old. Those same tigers last interacting with guests until they're 16 to 20 weeks old. We only need three to six cubs to even create an entire experience. And those cubs last four to five months. So maybe we have another group of three to six cubs that are going to last another four to six months. And that's an entire season for us. In the end, we may have eight to 12 babies. Those babies are super precious. If you look at our huge social media presence, um, you can see my son Cody Antle operates that. 14 million people uh, look at that stuff every day. That incredible um, tiger relationship he has with all those giant tigers, well, of course, that took place with all those babies we raised up. That's what we do. No baby would ever be euthanized. No baby would ever not have its very best life. And no baby isn't part of the Species Survival Trust, a very specific genetic testing program that tests tigers for the greatest genetic diversity to be able to hold bloodlines of tigers throughout the next decades to come, centuries to come, because they're the last of their kind. The bloodlines that my tigers have are not represented anywhere else on earth. There's only three to 4,000 tigers left on the planet. Every tiger is vital, whether it's a baby or an adult, and we care for all of those tigers to the absolute best of our ability, which is the best place in the world for caring for tigers and understanding their needs. But Doc, I, I how they portrayed you personally, and you were you were as kind of a publicity seeker, a womanizer with multiple wives. You know, was that true in your, like, talk to Come me on, about how it was. I'm a single guy. My wife died 25 years ago, the mother of my um, son and daughter, my youngest ones. And I've never been married since. I have 
girlfriends. I'm a single guy. This massive judgmentalness of somehow I'm not supposed to have girlfriends or something is just off my rocker here. What, how they got to this point. They are just looking for something to be outrageous. The girls that they're showing throughout the facility, they show girls dancing and getting ready and doing all of that stuff. These are the girls that are the wives of staff who live here. These are, the, these are my grandchildren. These are my grandchildren's fiance. This is my son's fiance. This is a variety of ladies who devote their time here that are part of the team. And the team is half men. You see, any men in the series, they cut them all out to make it appear that this is a girl place. Well, this is a boy place. The star is my son, my grandson. There's beautiful, lovely, hard-working girls here that take care of this facility. And our stars in their own right, Moksha Bibi's out there, got them uh, platforms. But they hid all of those notions. They hid the fact that this facility is the Ritz-Carlton of keeping big cats. No place finer. No one's even close to the grandeur and beauty of this facility. Carol Baskin's facility is some worn out junk heap. You look at her backyard, it looks like it's a fallen down kennel that she's keeping a dozen cats in. That's all the big cats that she has. And you go to Joe's. Joe's is an outrageous collection, kind of a worn out dog pen where he's got great intentions and way too many animals to care for and is missing the ingredient of enough money to properly make it work. We run this place to be able to have people have this interactive opportunity to see these big cats up close and uncaged in really beautiful settings, huge glass pool they can swim through, incredible tiger run um, array that goes on where adult tigers run out and chase stuff, other big tigers, 22 adult tigers come out for our big dinner party. All of those were once the babies that all are living with us and will be here for a couple of quick questions. Do you think Joe Exotic belongs in prison? I think Joe probably got a raw deal and probably got way more time than his crimes warranted. Um, I don't know if he belongs there or not. I thought he might get time served because he sat there for so long without a trial. Um, and I would hope that on his appeal, maybe something else comes to light. I think Joe was prosecuted for things that no one else has ever been prosecuted for in the United States. And I find it odd that that was tacked on to what looked to me to be a very flimsy murder for hire um, scam that went along. Have you spoken uh, Tiger uh, was released? I'm sorry, you broke up on me. Have I spoken? Have you spoken to Joe since Tiger King came out on Netflix? No, I believe Joe's in too tight of a lockdown. I heard he was moving to a medical facility um, in Texas because he is a fairly sick guy. He's got health troubles. And I thought he was being moved to a federal okay. hospital jail. And I don't know that he has any way to contact anybody. I don't doubt that he may uh, ring us up and try and make contact. Um, I I'm not sure how we'll deal with that. And talk to me about Carol Baskin, her first husband. I'm I'm so sorry you broke up again. Carol Baskin and her first husband, but I didn't know the question. Did, did, do you think she's responsible for his death? Do you think she killed him? The information I have is the information that seems to come from that television show. Holy mackerel, Carol killed her husband. Sure looks like it. Well, this is a great interview. Good I, luck to you. I was with my big uh, husband swimming on the river just... Uh, couple days ago and boats are whipping by as we're out there playing and letting her swim and play on the river along the preserve and people from the boats are screaming Carol killed her husband Carol killed her husband this is now the mantra of the COVID uh, excitement I think you know so many people are attracted to it one other quick thing you know at the end of the show it that B roll up and it says oh Myrtle Beach Safari was raided nothing further from the truth there was an inquiry made by the state of Virginia they came and asked us to participate in sharing some DNA samples about some lions that were part of another case. I was never accused of any wrongdoing. No one was blaming me for anything. They wanted us to participate in gathering that DNA. No cubs were ever euthanized. They roll that at the end. They know that that's not true and that euthanizing cubs is illegal, immoral, and absolutely never happens here and never has. What, in a word, how would you describe Tiger King? Holy mackerel. I don't know. <laughs> That's probably it, you know. 
what a what a ride. It is certainly a train wreck of entertainment for people to see. But you know, if I was gonna go another word, not a documentary, because don't take it to heart. People made wild accusations in there. The one girl makes a wild accusation about us. This is a girl who is a part-time babysitter here. She came in, watched my kids, got pregnant, moved off to marry the gentleman she got pregnant from. I only knew her for that short time. She went away. A year later, she came back, taught school for my kids a little bit, played around the edges of it. Never a tiger trainer, never a tiger person. She has, just because there's a picture of her with a tiger, it's the same thing I did with The Undertaker a couple of weeks ago. I have him hugging a big tiger and helping me do a PSA about saving tigers. Just because someone touches a tiger does not make them a tiger expert. Far the opposite. America is super shy on tiger experts.